momentum balance in free mechanics is super useful because it allows us to simply draw a control volume wherever we want in the flow and then compute the net force that's applying to that fluid inside uh, based just on measurements at the outlet and at the inlet. However, it's also very intimidating. And so let's take a look at the different terms inside this equation. We have here three, three different terms. Um, on the left is F net, is what we want to calculate. This is the net force, the sum of all the forces due to a propeller inside or a compressor or due to shear inside the flow or due to pressure inside the flow due to gravity. The net vector sum of all of those as one force. This is what we want to calculate. And this is equated to two things. The first part is the change in time of the momentum inside the control volume. And this is the sloshing back and forth. This is if you have a control volume with no inlet and no outlet, but the fluid inside is going back and forth, it still has movement, and that distribution is changing with time, then this will result in a net force on the fluid. And to this, we add the net flow of momentum through the boundaries of the control volume. This is the total sum, negative in and positive out, of all the flows um, carrying momentum with them inside the control volume. So instead of trying to prove to you this equation, let me try to show what it's good for and what it's not good for. Let's take a case where we have only one inlet and, no, yes, only one inlet and two outlets, uh, like this. What is this V rel and this dot n vector in this equation? So those terms here, what are those for? This is to designate the inlet or outlet velocity, incoming or outgoing velocity through the control surface, through the surface of the control volume. And so let's imagine now that you have through this control volume, this control volume in blue could be expanding or contracting, could be moving. The velocity of the fluid relative to the surface here, V rel at the inlet one would be like this, for example, could be uniform, for example. What is V orthogonal or what is V rel dot n? What we're looking for is the amount of velocity the component of the rail that is perpendicular to the area. This is V orthogonal here. And this V orthogonal is following the flow, um, the direction of the flow. So it might be incoming when the flow is incoming. It will be outgoing when the flow is outgoing. And in this equation here, V rel dot n, the dot product of this relative velocity vector and a unit vector that's pointing outwards every time um, is the length, is the length of the orthogonal. And by convention, in flow mechanics, this is very upsetting for thermodynamicists, by convention, uh, the orthogonal will be negative inwards and positive outwards. Okay. Um, let's take a case where there's only one inlet and one outlet, and let's have a look at this equation. The net force here is equal to the change in time here of the momentum inside the control volume plus whatever is going out here with density, the component of velocity perpendicular to the surface, and the vector velocity v2. Yes? We do this integral here over the whole area too to make sure that we catch any non-uniformities in the velocity distribution, and then minus the same thing for the incoming velocity. So in this, what could create a net force? What would result in net force? Well. Uh, let's take a look first at the first term. What could be this term here? Um, this term here is not zero or not vector zero, if you want, if the momentum inside the control volume changes. And it changes if the distribution of velocities is changing, yes. Or if the distribution of mass following the velocity is changing. So if the velocity vectors are all the same, but the mass is traveling along those velocity vectors, the density is not uniform, then um, you would have a change in this term. Let me give you an example. You're on a cruise boat, and a cruise boat rocks back and forth, um, and because it rocks back and forth, the swimming pool inside uh, the cruise boat, I'm told this is a thing, uh, the swimming pool inside the boat uh, sees the water slosh back and forth, and there's a force exerting on this water. It's equivalent to a force exerting on this water that's pushing it back and forth. This net force here will be computed by com calculating the distribution of momentum inside the control volume. And if that changes in time, because the water is sometimes left, sometimes right, 
then you have a net force that's appearing. Okay, so that's so much for the first term. And what about the other two terms? What could cause? If we say this is zero because nothing is changing in time, the fluid flow is steady, um, then what could cause a non-zero force? What could cause a force uh, with the two remaining terms? Well, uh, this is there are many possible reasons why it could be non-zero. Uh, the first could be that the mass flow is different. So, for example, you have a tank with no inlet, and the tank is leaking, and the flow is rushing out of this. The outgoing velocity and the outgoing mass flow is greater than the zero incoming mass flow. And so, because of this, even if you have um, zero velocity inlet, you will have a, a net force applying on the flow. Um, you could have velocity vectors with different lengths. So a great output velocity and a small input velocity. This would be a jet engine, for example, admits air with low velocity, shoots it out the back with high velocity, different lengths. This is equivalent to a net force. Uh, you could have different directions. You could have the same velocity incoming and the same velocity outgoing, but they have different directions. So these are different vectors, V1 and V2. And if so, you have a net force that is resulting from this. And you could have also, which is very tricky, different distributions of velocity. And I'll take an example of this uh, later on in the, in, the, in the chapter. So um, examples, practical examples, we've seen this before. Uh, this is an example where you have low velocity incoming into the pipe here. And because the cross section of the pipe changes and you have now a hollow cylinder of water shooting out the nozzle, um, then you have a non-zero force. And the net force on the water is pushing this way, so out of the boat. And so, of course, the, this results in a force opposite on the pipe. And this is what these people here are trying to compensate with, um, trying to exert the opposite force um, on the pipe. A uh, helicopter would have here a low incoming velocity and high outgoing velocity below, even if the cross sections are different. Um, and so this results in a, a net force. This is what keeps the helicopter up in the air. This is what you can see on the bottom. This is when the stream of air hits the water. Um, creates uh, mist on the surface of the water. Very pretty. A rocket is a typical example of a machine where if you draw a control volume uh, that surrounds the rocket completely and you move along with the rocket, then you have zero incoming velocity and all the velocity is outgoing. Um, and so you have a net force that's exerting as a result of this. Um, and so finally, uh, instead of showing you more pictures and more math equations, let me try to show you how this equation works in practice. For this, we are looking at the case of a blast deflector. This is what you put on a um, aircraft carrier when aircrafts are taking off. And the reason you put this uh, is to shield the aircraft behind. So this aircraft is about to take off. Uh, the jet engines will blast some very hot, very fast air. And it's incredible how um, annoyed people get when you just uh, destroy their 30 million fighter jet with your hot blast of uh, air from the engines of the previous jet. And so to avoid this, then you put this deflector plate and it doesn't help the airplane in any way. This is just to protect the following airplane. And so you have a hot jet coming in, bumping onto this plate and being pushed upwards. And so I'm gonna to try to simplify the situation. We're gonna say, this is a deflector here and the flow is coming from the left with a uniform velocity. And it's leaving towards the top with a uniform velocity. And the length of those vectors are the same. It's just being deflected upwards from this. I'm going to say there is 10 kilograms per second coming in at 20 meters per second. That's a uniform inlet, uniform outlet. Question is, what is the net force exerting on the fluid as it uh, passes along and is deflected along with this deflector? Well, let's take a look. First thing we do is we build a control volume. We draw a potato around flow and we make sure that we cut the inlet and the outlet at nice 90 degrees angle so that our math is going to be a lot easier. Once you've done this, this is a really cool thing about integral analysis. Once you've done this, you can just remove all the rest from your mind. And so what is resulting now from the physical and mathematical point of view is that you have control volume, you have incoming flow, you have outgoing flow, and nothing else matters. Nothing inside, nothing outside matters. All you're computing is a difference in momentum between the outlet and the inlet. So what is going on here? Let's write this equation and let me try to switch the slides so we can see them all together like so. Yes, 
No, not yet. Let me see. Like so. Yes. All right. Here we go. So we have a little picture here to just remind us what we're looking at. And we have a general equation, which is here, uh, for the net force. And the first thing we're going to do is we say this is a steady flow. It doesn't change with time. And so whatever this amount is inside, it's not changing with time. This goes to zero or vector zero to be precise. And this part here, we'll split it into two, one for the inlet and one for the outlet of our control volume. And so now it looks like so. We have this part is split into inlet and outlet like this. And we replace now this term, the relative velocity dot the end vector by the length of this orthogonal vector here. Um, and this vector is, sorry, this, the length of this vector, v orthogonal, this length is positive outwards and negative inwards. Yes. So that this is going to be a negative number because we're in the incoming integral and this is going to be a positive number because it's the outgoing integral. So now if I rewrite again uh, the same equation and I try to replace this velocity here with the absolute velocity, um, so the, the, the length in absolute terms, positive terms, I have to put a minus at the inlet and I have to keep the plus at the outlet. Okay. Um, the velocities are uniform, so I can drop the integrals. It means that the integral of whatever with respect to area is going to be just the area multiplied by whatever is here. And so I can just drop the integral and I'm left with this at the inlet, rho times v orthogonal times a multiplied by the velocity vector in and rho v orthogonal times a multiplied by vector out. Now rho v orthogonal a, this is the mass flow. And so I can rewrite this as so. I can say this is the mass flow here, n dot in multiplied by inlet velocity and n dot out will be out. And I can also simplify all this because it's the same mass flow incoming than outgoing in our case. And so this just turns out to be net force here is a mass flow multiplied by the difference in velocity as vectors, difference in velocity between outlet and outlet, between outlet and inlet. Okay, so this is kind of nice. Um, m dot times v2 minus v1. How does this compute now with math? Um, we split into components. This is three equations, one for x, one for y, one for z. But in our problem, we only have two dimensions. Uh, I think it's plotted below here. Let me try to switch perhaps the picture. Yes. In our problem, we only have two dimensions of interest, which are x and y, x being the horizontal part and y being the vertical one. And so I split into f net x and f net y. And every time I have to take the x and y components of v2 and v1. Um, taking those components now may be a little bit tricky because v2x and v2y may be positive or negative depending on where v2 is pointing and depending on where positive is overall. And for this, I need to look at the diagram very carefully and picture um, where v2x is. And so when I have these numbers, which are plotted in blue here, I have to pay attention to the sign, positive or negative, depending on the coordinate system. What is the coordinate system in this case? Well, if you look below in this little picture here, we have v2 is going, um, let's say v2 is going in this way, like so. Uh, and so uh, the x component of v2 is pointing this way and the x component of v2 is pointing away from positive x which is in this direction. So v2x here will be a negative number. And so it will be here minus 20 cosine of uh, 40 degrees. Yes, so I'm taking the 20 degrees, sorry, I'm taking the uh, 20 meters per second of v2 which are like this and I'm taking the projection of this length down onto the x-axis like this. So this becomes minus 20 cos 40. Yes. The minus here is from above. And then I have the length of v1. Um, and v1x, v1 is purely horizontal and it's pointing that way. Um, and that way turns out to be in the opposite direction of positive x. So the length of v1 is minus 20. Um, and then I do the same for y and it turns out that um, v2y is in the positive y direction and v1y is just zero. Yes. So I add up those numbers and I get those two things. F net as a vector is two components. One is positive in x and the other is positive in y. Positive 46, positive 128. So if, if you plot this on the diagram, it would go in this direction here. And I have a little difficulty with the mirroring of the video. Uh, so you're pointing in this direction, positive x and positive y. This is the net force that is applied to the fluid. Now, of course, the net force 
applied by the fluid on the deflector, which is the, exactly the opposite. And so we'll be pointing down into the corner of the deflector. So this is how you make sense of uh, the momentum balance equation uh, for simple cases where you have one coming and one outgoing vector with different directions.